It's been a long one and a half years since anime watchers first entered the basement and heard terms like Eldian and Marlians for the first time, but now Attack on Titan the final season is finally here, and there's no better way to fill the time between episode drops than unpacking everything we saw together, so let's do just that. First things first, new characters, new warrior candidates to be exact. Attack on Titan the final season honestly could have gotten away with a series name change like Attack on Titan Shippuden for how much new is going to be in this season. Although we get familiar faces like Reiner and Zeke, we are introduced to four major new characters whose names you're going to want to remember. Gabby, Falco, Udo, and Zofia. A big theme of this episode and this season is certainly going to be seeing things from another perspective, and you can certainly think of these new warrior candidates like a twisted parallel of the scouts from Paradise Island. Just as a refresher, these warrior characters, they're all of Eldian blood living in Marley camps on the Marley mainland. The Marleyan government, who possessed a majority of the Titan Shifters at the start of the series, has this special program that pulls Eldians from the slums and trains them up to be people who will inherit the special titans. Annie, Reiner, Bertold, they were once in these new kids exact same shoes. In exchange for their service though, the warrior candidates families are basically granted citizenship and allowed to leave the Eldian camps freely. Gabby is a character who we're definitely going to want to keep our eyes on. Huge Aaron Yeager energy from this one, except instead of demonizing mysterious man-eating titans, she's decided to demonize the monsters of Paradise Island that she's heard about all her life. She is intent on proving that there are good Eldians in contrast to the devils of Paradise Island, and she's intent on proving she's one of those good ones. It's it's actually quite tragic knowing this young girl, she's playing right into her government's hands and complying with their wishes to try and prove that their biases are wrong, when knowing what we know about Marley, they have no intention of ever changing their perspectives of Eldians. No matter how much work Gabby will give these people, they will never see her as an equal or even as a human. Next is Falco. If Gabby is like Eren, then Falco is kind of a cross between Armin and Mikasa. Gabby's right hand man, support, but also someone who is deeply protective of Gabby. Falco also has an older brother who is in the program too, which gives his family actually double the chances of escaping the slums if even just one of their sons gets accepted. While the four younger kids are auditioning to be the next armored titan after Reiner, Colt is actually on standby to be the next beast titan. Sophia is an Annie Leonhardt type, serious and focused on one goal, getting accepted into the program and, and being chosen to get the next titan. She's a little less cold than Annie though, showing us that these aren't just clones of the characters we once knew. Last is Udo, who is a more studious, more worried character than his competitors. In that regard, there's some Armin in him for sure. He speaks the language spoken by the soldiers of Fort Slava and tragically it allows him to hear just how cruel other nations are to Eldians. A big thing that's going to matter this season is that curse of Ymir. Remember, Titan Shifter's lives come to an end after 13 years of inheriting a Titan, no matter what. We're coming off of a time skip of four years, plus the one year between the basement and the scouts reaching the sea, the five years between the attack on Shiganshina and our main characters getting inducted as scouts. So Reiner is really entering the twilight years of his Titan tenure. Even though he is well respected among Marley and the warrior candidates, everyone knows his time is up, and these four kids we just talked about, they're really really competing to inherit his armor. Also keep in mind Aaron Yeager has had his titan for almost as long as Reiner. Same with Annie. And what about Zeke? It's just some stuff to think about as we start to brace ourselves for the impending season and how dark things are probably going to get. So I know the other question you're probably asking yourself, that time skip, and where the heck are the main characters? It's been approximately four years since Aaron, Mikasa, Armin, and the others first witnessed the sea. As we saw, Marley has been fighting its own war during this time. Keep in mind, we know now that other nations exist and have their own stories. Just like in our world, when two nations are at odds, it doesn't mean every other dispute pauses and everyone takes their turns hashing things out. Although Marley and the Island of Paradise have their own beef, between the fossil fuels underneath the island and Marley still wanting to reclaim their colossal female and founding titans, Marley has other wars to fight, as we saw clearly in this episode. And importantly, titan strength is still impressive, but it's no longer the OP weapon of mass destruction that it was in centuries past. Machine guns, tanks, and other titan-killing weapons exist that pose legitimate threats to Marley's greatest asset in battle. As for what our Eldian scouts have been up to? Well, we'll see more of that in the next few episodes, but let's just say they have not been sitting still at all. Just remember, these guys are scouts. It's in their blood to go out beyond their home base, sent out to gather information about the enemy's position, strength, or movements. That's literally the definition provided by Google for the word scout, and I think we're soon going to see it's extremely accurate. This episode was really important for setting up the chessboard. I'm sure many of you want to see the characters we know and love post time skip, but you just don't play a game of chess with only half the pieces. This season is going to require our patience a bit, but I I think Attack on Titan has totally earned that. And as far as the new animation studio goes, so far so good with Mappa. This might be a polarizing statement, but as for the 3D CGI, I can't believe I'm saying this, but so far so good. I used to hate it when 3D popped up in anime because it so rarely fits. The last couple years it's been getting better and better, and here I honestly thought it looked great. Mappa delivered Doro Hetero earlier this year, so they clearly know what they're doing when it comes to 3D. It's not like they just decided to take this incredibly important show to try out 3D for the first time. No, they, they know what they're doing. There's been all kinds of 
rumors and speculation, theories about internal chaos at MAPPA, but I'm not seeing that on screen, at least not yet, knock on wood. Keep in mind, this studio's track record, just in 2020 alone, is unreal. They worked on Doro Hedero, Jujutsu Kaisen, and God of High School, all of which had gorgeous animation. So if they stick to the manga for story, get the pacing right, and do what they do best with the animation, I think we're in for a real, real treat. But I've gotta know, how are you feeling about the final season's first episode? Are you just ecstatic that it's back? Do you have any concerns based on what you saw? Any burning questions? Let me know by dropping a comment and subscribe so that we can keep chatting like this every Sunday for the next little while. I'm gonna try and cover the show Emergency Awesome on Game of Thrones style, so I hope you'll join me for the ride. All right, until next week, take it easy. I'll see you then.